Hello. Hi, Idril. Hey, it's Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, Idril. Um, glad I caught you. Hey, so we were kind of talking about when someone gets started in base manager and they start programming, there's some things about what we're going to call best practices when people set up a schedules. The first thing that I was talking with this customer about was naming schedules. So can you tell me some of the well, actually, before I ask you a question, I just want to remind anybody that would be watching our recording later on that when people name a program, a program or schedule at Base Manager, they have what is it, it's 40 characters. So they've got a lot of a lot of characters they can do that that carries over to the controller as soon as it syncs up, assuming it's synced up and they get 25 characters. So it's a little bit shorter, but they have a lot to work with. So kind of with that 40 or 25 characters, what are some things that you like to do? What are some suggestions you like to offer people? Well, um, I've watched people over the years. They, uh, those guys who are doing lots of HOAs, they'll put the addresses for the, where the solenoids actually live in that description so that, that you know, if they get hit by a bus and they're not there, somebody can find that valve you know, when they take over for them. So that's, that's I like seeing those on. So, so like zone 717, 123 Main Street, something like that. Right. Okay, yeah, I exactly. like that. Yep. That's a, so that would be the schedule because we're talking program or schedule level, right? Not the individual zone, so that, which is right. which we'll talk about that later at another time. Okay. Well, that's so uh, I guess I did you wrong. That's that's more zones. <laughs> okay. Okay. Schedule, but schedule, you still get to name where it's, you can name a whole street. You know, if it's a whole parkway, you know, they'll name that parkway, you know, Sprayhead Main Street Parkway. There we go. I like that. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, so, yeah, I think one of the warnings, though, is is like special characters. What is, what happens if I put a star or a pound sign in the name? Does it kind of freak out? It it does not make base manager happy. <laughs> yeah. So don't. It, so. It'll, it'll add them. It'll keep adding them. Oh, the, yeah. The okay. I've seen that. It looks like a weird error. Okay. So stay away from special characters. So, right. but yes, yeah, so we've got, I guess that maybe the, the takeaway from this one is, is folks have some, I got 40 characters, or even if you call it 25 characters, they got some characters to work with. So, and let's make the names description, descriptive and, and make it work for you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And to your site or to your company, you know, whatever the company personality is. Whatever your lingo is, make it fit your lingo. Yeah. You got the space. The other thing that we wanted to talk about or share with people, it's a good practice on setting up your programs and schedules is how to order your schedules or how to order your programs. We've got 99 programs. So I think that's probably the first thing to remind people of. 99 programs. Now, before you worked with Baseline, what were you used to working with? How many programs did you used to work with? Four. <laughs> Four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. Right, right. So what I used to do when I was a contractor is you take programs out and you'd have to keep overriding them or delete them because you've only got the four. N needless to say, you'd have to combine programs sometimes because you've got to compromise. So with that 99 programs, wow, you can start making some real choices. And that kind of I think that leads to a shift on the way you're going to think about programs. So let's let's kind of talk about that. Well, we we're talking about ordering. Let's come back to focus on what I wanted to talk about. Um, so if I've got, let's say I've got 20 programs that I decided to use. So I'll start at one, program one, program two, program three, program four. Is that what you do? No, no let's don't do that. Okay. I, I start people that program 10 or higher. And I think we'll get into it where we, there's a natural order uh, of priorities, uh, organic, if you will, priorities, that if I, I leave one through nine open for when I need special programs to run at certain times without having to give them a priority, I can do it. I have nine left. I've already got 99. So I've got lots of room yeah. to move those around anyway. Right. So this is like a, this is almost like, Hey, we're telling you this before you get too deep into it and yes. something it's a good practice, right? So, so leaving a gap there now, what about why would people leave a gap? Oh, so, well, why would people leave a gap? And if maybe I leave the first 10, open is there any other gaps that i might leave in there and i can think of one reason why i would leave a gap between there um mine mine would be mine would be if i have a program that i'm going to use once or twice a year maybe it's a, a special blow-up program or a plant establishment program i don't want anyone to accidentally run that 
So I'm going to make it way down at the bottom. It might be program 90, maybe program 99 near the bottom. And then that would be the only time we're going to manually click it, manually run it. It's not mixed in with the other, the bulk of the others on QuickView. I use those lower, the 99s to 90s. I like to use those for cistern starts, pump starts. If I'm doing extra, oh. extra ordinary stuff, like you said, I don't want it in the main group with everybody. I want it kind of out of sight running in the background. And if I put them in 99, people tend to ignore them a little bit, but it yeah. gives you lots of room. Yeah, I, so just visually there's some room. Now, of course, when you go to the Schedules tab, they're still going to be all stacked together. But on yeah. Quick View, we'll have some gaps in between there. And, and we'll play around with that later on. We'll talk about that when we get to uh, Zones. We'll talk about maybe leaving some gaps in there. Same same concept is going to carry over. Great. Dig it. I've, I've, seen, I've seen some people, too, though. It's kind of the gap thing you're talking about. They'll do spring schedules like in the 20s, then they'll do sort of summer schedules in the 30s and 40s, and you know they split them up, and they know, so when they look at a line item, they know, oh, that's a summer schedule, and it's going to run like this, and then they'll just disable the ones they don't want to use. Hey, so it's a question for you. This is just like a fun fact. Have you, as a customer success manager and as, a, as an RSM, have you ever run anybody that has used all 99 programs? No, I keep offering a bounty on that. <laughs> But so far, nobody's got the bounty. Right, right. And I've, I've offered to travel back into into region to buy a steak dinner. If, if you could have a legitimate reason to use 99 programs. Yeah, it's, yes. It's got to be real. You can't just, yeah, it can't be bogus. It's got to be real. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, enabling a schedule. So got a program opened. Uh, we've, named the, we've named the program and the schedule. We, we've set up the name. That's great. And then the next thing down on that one is... Um, Program is that little box, that little pesky box. It says program enabled. Any it's significance not, about that? It's not pesky. You got to you. You better turn the schedule on. It's you got to enable a program. But the, the the nice thing about that enable or disable feature is if it is a spring schedule and it's summertime, I can disable that schedule, save it, don't lose any of my data, none of my information. And it's always there. And then you can tell, you can see it on your screen. It's gray. You know it's not running. So yeah. a very powerful little tool there with that enable, disable button. Okay. Right. Because, because again, using those four programs, you'd have to overwrite the program. But now when we got 99, I could create it, turn it off or on with enable or disable. So good reminder, click the enable program. Otherwise, your program's not going to run. Now, right. good reminder for everybody is that when a program is disabled or not enabled, it's gray, just like a controller is offline or a zone right. is not functional. It's, it's just, yeah. So, so let's just kind of recap. What are some other, some reasons why people would start using these 99 programs and enabling? So you said the, the spring, the spring startup type, but you also mentioned cisterns, like a cistern fill. Right. Yeah. So if you're doing, uh, if you're using a, an external pump to fill a cistern or uh, city water to fill a cistern, you're going to have additional programs that turn turn those on. So there's there's a possibility that you could have cisterns turned on, pumps turned on, refill, recharge, but you can turn lights on. There's you can open uh, and close doors, locks. Yeah. There's Starting a to ton take of it. different things. Yeah. As long as you can put a switch to it, you can use our controller. And then there's a place in that schedule where you tell it. Don't pay attention to the rain sensor and just keep running. So yeah. it, it's one of our many features. Well, we definitely have more uh, best management practices that are going to be coming. So watch for this. We're going to kind of do a series of, of me making calls to Idril and, and other folks to kind of get some feelings on what people think are best programming, uh, best practices for programming. So, hey, Idril, thanks so much. We'll uh, talk to you soon. Take care.